Hello guys, time for our monthly tradition on this channel, tips and tricks from Twitter, or X if you like to call it this way, about Laravel that I curated over last month of July, publishing it in the first days of August. Today I have 12 tips for you and let's dive in. The first tip comes from myself and it's about eloquent scopes and about a thing I've noticed in one open source project by actually the author is Nabil from larasense.com and in that larasense, which is open source, I saw something like this. In eloquent scope, while defining the scope, if some column is repeating in multiple tables, then you are at risk of getting SQL error that column is ambiguous. To avoid that, you may add a prefix to the table, which is this get table. So this is one example from one model and this is another example from another model. Both have is displayed field column, but it will not give you errors. Also, interestingly, in the reply to that tweet, Osama pointed out that there's a different method to achieve that. There's qualify column, but to be honest, and I replied to that tweet by Osama, to me, this get table is more readable. I wouldn't know what qualify column means if I saw that just in the code base. Tip number two comes from Osama himself. Now he's the author of the tip and it's about carbon. Do you know that carbon has a lot of methods is something? Let me zoom that in. So there's is today, is tomorrow, is yesterday. Then you can check is weekend or weekday. Then compare is same day or something. And as Osama ends his tip, the list goes on. There are more and you can check the carbon official documentation for that. If you need some method for comparing dates, there's a high chance that carbon has it. Check the docs. The next tip comes from myself, and by the way, I will link all those tweets and tips in the description below so you may check them out. But now let's talk about responses from API, and one of the ways to make consistent API responses, there are multiple ways, like controllers, traits, but one interesting way, maybe non-traditional way, is service provider. And here's the zoomed in version. In your service provider, it may be a separate response service provider, or in general app service provider, you may define response macro. Response is here on top. You define the name and then define what that returns. Then in this case, we register our service provider or as I said, it could be in the app service provider and then what it allows you to do in controller, you can do response and then that becomes the method. So response API success and you may add parameters. As you can see, some parameters are optional or have their default values. And to be honest, this would be not the first option I would go to. I'm personally a bigger fan of doing that in base controller, but you may also prefer response macros like in this example. The next tip comes from Martin and this is very simple, a new feature in the latest Laravel 12.29 in array keys validation. Not much more to add here, validates that specific keys exist in your arrays. So in this case, we have permissions array and then selected permission value, which should be one of the keys of that array. The next tip comes from myself and it's about PHP, not Laravel and about is set method, which is, I will be honest with you, this code was generated by AI to me. I was playing around with some demos and then I received this code and I didn't know that is set may accept multiple parameters. And then I went to the official docs of php.net. And then if we scroll down, we have this. If multiple parameters are supplied, it will return true only if all parameters are set, which means if at least one of the data or meta are empty, then the exception would be thrown. And actually this is one of the perks of coding with AI assistance. Sometimes you learn new stuff that you didn't know, but of course you need to triple check if that method or that parameter even exists because sometimes AI does generate something new, but non-existent or deprecated or from previous versions. So please double check. <coughs> and if you want to follow my journey of coding with AI, now I have a separate channel, AI Coding Daily. So subscribe to that to see my coding experiments with AI. Let's move on. And the next tip comes from Wendell. This is PHP Laravel tip about exceptions. So usually what we think about exceptions is one exception and one method to process that exception. But that is not necessarily the case. This is the zoomed in example. Imagine payment exception and that exception may have different methods with different error messages. 
and then in some action or it could be controller or something else you may throw exceptions specific method with that specific message to be honest i wouldn't do that this way because usually exception is about specific events so for example card expired exception or insufficient funds exception but if you want to group similar exception into one exception class with different messages this may be your way the next tip comes from myself and this is actually new features in laravel framework i used to shoot separate videos on those but those are kind of small sugar in the framework not really worth the full video so i often group them into like monthly tips and this is one of them there is a new feature where value between so this is the original pull request by dark ghost hunter so you can see before and after and if you have multiple where conditions from and to now we can make it shorter with where value between and also a few more methods are included with the same pull request. This was released in Laravel 12.21. The next tip comes from Punyapal, also often guest on this monthly series. If you need to generate a password, there are a few features in STR class in Laravel STR helper. There's STR random, of course, for not only passwords, but specifically for password, there's STR password with such parameters. Again, the zoomed in example, you can choose length, whether it should contain letters, numbers, or symbols, and also allows spaces or not. And this may be the result of pretty random, strong password. The next tip comes from myself again, roughly half of the tips in this video are from myself because I noticed that people like those tips more than 100 likes, so probably it's valuable for a bigger audience. It's not that I want to promote my own tweets. I just post something, see the numbers, and if it seems valuable, then I will repost it on YouTube, LinkedIn, and elsewhere. So with notifications, of course, we know notifications for emails usually, but you can also store them in the database in the database table and then process that there's a specific function on red notifications also functions like mark as red and it would update the data in the database this is for the use case where you want to show notifications on your website usually on top something like alerts so they would be shown from the database without being sent via email or as in this example you may do actually both provide multiple drivers for the same notification as i said i will put all the links to all those tweets in the description below and most of those contain links to the documentation or some other resources to read more details the next tip comes from david and i would call it a little bit controversial i would probably not do it the same way but it is possible to use multiple database transactions inside each other let me show you so there is a controller with kind of global db transaction inside it may call some action method like create user execute or create profile execute and then in both of those there is a thread on twitter and if we zoom in in both of those actions there's also db transaction here and db transaction in execute in another action class and then what david is saying that the benefit of this that laravel will scope the transactions to the outermost transaction so basically if any of the actions fail if that action is called from the controller it would roll back both but also it allows you to call the action class separately from something like job test or elsewhere not necessarily from controller I don't know personally i don't remember a real use case for that have you done something like this share in the comments below and we may discuss the next tip comes from newton job and this is kind of simple but he shows what he does on most projects he changes the validation file of initial laravel validations from the word field inside of that to just attribute so what he's saying is that the word field is technical but if you leave the attribute must be a date for example that attribute is replaced with actual field name so the result is the created at must be a date equal to something so basically humans while reading don't need that word field not sure kind of a small detail but from ux point of view error messages do matter maybe that's even worth making a pull request to the framework itself and the last tip of the series comes from Lakshan and he kind of reminds 
this is the documentation but a good reminder that in past you may group the tests it's a functional testing framework so there are no classes but you can group within the same file various tests with describe so this is kind of a group of tests and on that group you may execute separate before each you may add a skip to that block this is exactly the screenshot from the official docs it was released let me show you in 2.9 version of past 4 as the documentation says grouping of tests and sharing setup and teardown logic so yeah what do you think guys have you learned anything new and as usual every month i will continue summarizing and curating best tips from twitter so subscribe to the channel to get those monthly videos or follow me on twitter directly i keep retweeting the tips that i find useful from the community and see you guys in other videos